now. 888-467-4200 and they'll deliver it right away. That's 888-467-4200. You can smile straight in the world's face this time. Welcome back to the PM Show, weekend edition on CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Michael Horn. That's Nancy. That's Larry Minetti. Little uh, Crossing Jordan NCIS music here for you here on the show. Thank you very much, Tomas, for finding that in. Yeah, and and Miguel Ferrara is with us. And in my estimation, one of the the finest best actors today. Thank you, Larry. That and means a lot to me. That comes from the bottom of my heart. I mean it. Absolutely. Oh. You guys have made my day. Thank you. We've watched a lot of your stuff. Absolutely, and love it. Just love it. Your characters are just unforgettable characters. I mean, you really make them so believable. Um, Like I was saying, Crossing Jordan was one of my favorite shows. And I just loved your character. (laughs) It was wonderful. Yeah, you know, uh, again, it was it's so boring to say how great everything was. <laughs> well, life, I, life is great. I, I, I know it's more interesting to talk about conflict, but, you know, we did that show for six years, and wow. it was just great. Everybody, we all really got along so well and just enjoyed each other's company so much. There there weren't, there, there, there was really uh, very very little friction at any time so it was uh, it was a terrific experience the thing miguel i think the thing that uh, that strikes me is you have the look that just is the believable look and to me yeah. when you when you meet someone if like talking to you now and meeting you and then seeing you on a show it's like i call it the dustin hoffman thing because that's the first time i know is that you just become the role no matter what we forget who you are and you become that role exactly. and i think that yeah. is yeah. what makes the roles because you've had so many of these obviously people are putting in a lot of different series and shows and movies and things because you have that look you just go into it and you become that person he's comfortable you're comfortable in your own skin playing the role well you know I, I, I work really hard at it. You know, it, it, that, that's... Uh, you make it look easy. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, though, you know, you, you brought up both of my parents, and they, they provided me with such an incredible example. You know, a work ethic, but, but more importantly, you know, uh, you, you talked about my dad when I first told him that I, what I wanted to do, and the only piece of advice he, only, he ever gave me, he gave me during that telephone call, and he said, you have to remember, you must take it seriously. He wow. said, you have yeah. to take this very, very seriously. Great advice. Jose Ferrara is great. What was it like growing up with the two parents? I mean, we can only think about this. Some people say it's a benefit. Some people say it's a hindrance because now you got to live up to these legends. And you had, you know, Jose Ferrara, and then you had uh, Rosemary Clooney there. That's a the big one-two punch. Yeah. Well, you know, um, to, to tell you the truth, there really was no sense of... Uh, any anything that was special about them other than the fact that they were mom and dad you know they just had jobs that were unlike the jobs that my friends had my friends parents had mm-hmm. and uh I, I i had no sense of their sort of art, artistic uh, uh contribution you know i i it was years seriously i i had no idea that my mother was a really good singer until my late teens really wow. now why how was that she would just sing around you know she'd always sing to the kids and sang around the house and i went to recording sessions with her when i was a kid and all that stuff and it just i, I there was no appreciation for it because it was mom yeah. and then finally uh, in my late teens i sort of gave it a listen and said She's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I'd say when, when, when you get get a little bit age and uh, uh, get a little bit of age behind you, and you're able to step back with some uh, objectivity, that, that's when I could really appreciate how how terrific they both were. We hear her constantly on Sirius uh, Sinatra. Oh, we play them. Yeah. 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 Did she ever uh, go into break out into Hey Mambo and call you guys at the dinner table or something like no, that? No, I don't. No. no. <laughs> hey, I, uh, this is corny, but did she ever make Irish stew? My mother couldn't cook Jello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Come on, that's great. That's that good. was sweet. Hey, Miguel, tell us a little bit about your experience on RoboCop. 
Well, it was the best summer of my life. Why? It really was. And <laughs> Why? Was it was it fun? Was it like playing? Oh my god, I was I can't remember how old I was. I was probably 31 or 2, something like that. And I'd been you know out there trying to be an actor for a number of years and taking anything that came along and and all of a sudden I was on this movie and nobody thought it'd really be any good, but we we're in Dallas for a whole summer and I was getting paid, and they gave me a nice hotel room, and and meeting interesting people, and you know, chasing girls, and all. I mean, it was it was really the best summer of my whole life. So I'm gonna was, find out more here. Can we hold on for one? Hold that thought. We yeah. got another break. A break on, and I, I can sense that hotel rooms are a big part of Miguel for our success. He talked about the hotel room, <laughs> <and> that, <laughs> the one in Hawaii. We'll find out where else he's like some of these hotels too. Stay with us. My life in hotel. The great Miguel for our Nancy and Larry Minetti. It's the PM show on CRN.